Uh, yeah, thanks for coming, everybody. Um, today's press conference has been called to announce that uh, Sunday's game against the Adelaide 36ers was my last game that I'll play. I'm retiring from the game of basketball. I've been very spoiled by this sport and it has given me more than I could ever have hoped for. I can't even begin to describe how privileged I am to have been accepted into the Wildcats family and to be a part of the growth over the last seven years of the, of the most successful club in NBL history. At this club we value ourselves on being the best at everything we do. Bevo encourages us to not only be professional but to be elite athletes. It's an expectation within the playing group to commit to the system and to put your body on the line for your teammates and to be relentless of 40 minutes of basketball. I can quite comfortably sit here today and say that I've done just that. I've committed to putting my body on the line day in, day out for the club and for my brothers that stand behind me. My, my body just won't do what I ask it to do and my mind is tired of, trying to, of asking it to try. The effort to play at an elite level is just more than I can give anymore. But I've been very lucky to have played nine years and it's a privilege. I decided I wanted to step away from the game I loved on my terms. I wanted, I wanted to be asked the question, why are you retiring? As opposed to being asked the question, why, should, why didn't you retire a year ago? Given the physical punishment my body has endured over the years, I'm physically and mentally fatigued. It has, been a very, uh, it has been very stressful pushing through the pain barrier and my gut was telling me that it was time to take a different direction in my life. I've achieved everything I've wanted to achieve in my career, apart from winning the Andrew Vlahoff Award. Thank you, Damien Martin. I've been a part of the most successful club in NBL history. I've played alongside a six-time MVP and dedicated co-captain in Sean Redditch. I've achieved an athlete's ultimate prize in winning a championship, and I've done that with the majority of men standing behind me. I'm comfortable and proud of everything I've accomplished and I look forward to the new path I'll take in my life. I would like to take this opportunity to thank a few of the many people that have helped me along the way. Nick Marvin, who is the backbone of this organisation and has transformed it into what it is today. To Rob Beveridge, my friend, who has coached me since I was 16 years of age who has been a father figure in my life and given me nothing but his absolute support. To Jody Maguire, my mentor, you have guided me through the ups and downs. And passed on your wisdom, which I will cherish forever. To my wonderful teammates, You're a truly amazing bunch of men with such strength and character. Thank you for allowing me to be me, accepting me for who I am with no judgment and allowing me to grow as a leader and as a man. Last but not least, thank you to my wonderful family and son Charlie for their unconditional love and support. To be clear, this is not goodbye to the Perth Wildcats. I'm simply changing my role within the club I'll still be going to battle with the boys every game. I just won't be wearing the number 22 anymore. Thank you. I guess uh, yeah, I've known Robbo since he's 16 years of age and, uh, and I guess I am a father figure to him and uh, yeah, in, in that role, uh, very, very proud. You're very proud that I can sit next to Robbo now and, and uh, yeah, there's, there's always, you know, I speak to people that there's a, a defined time in your life when you know when it's time to move on. And Robbo could have continued to play for another two, three, four years. But uh, right now, just the, the courage, uh, how brave he is to go out on his terms. I think there's a lot of people out there that uh, continue and they keep going on and on and on. But uh, I think that... Uh, from a leadership perspective, uh, what Robbo has done for our club, uh, he's turned it around. Uh, I'm pr uh, absolute privileged to, to have him as, uh, as my captain. And uh, he will be totally irreplaceable. And uh, we know that uh, he will remain with the club in, in, in a different role. 
and uh, he'll, he'll be a mentor for, for our team. And uh, you know, I guess on behalf of uh, you know, the club, the coaches, uh, uh, the fans, everybody, I you know, want to thank you, Robbo, for everything you've done for this club. Thanks, mate. Uh, Robbo is a natural born leader. Uh, when you know, I made him the captain, he said, well, he didn't really want to be a captain, but it, it's just who he is. Uh, it's only a label uh, a lot of the time. And the thing is, uh, you know, he is just that natural born leader who will always be there for the guys. And uh, you know, probably more from a leadership, from a mentor for, for these guys. Uh, you know, he's the guy who puts his heart and soul into this club, you know, his body on the line every single game and uh, I think that he's just a leader by example and uh, now it's, it's time for him to, to do some things off the court from a leadership perspective. Robbo, how long have you been actually thinking about retiring? Uh, look, the off season was, was quite stressful with, with yet another injury um, and, and to not be fully able to have a pre-season with the team um, really took its toll on me this year. Um, I would say the last couple of months uh, I've been putting steps in place to, to ensure that this is the right thing for me to do. Um, so I would say the process has been about two months and you know it was probably a, probably just over a week ago that I thought, yep, it's time to step away. Um, you know, my gut was telling me it was the right time and, and I had to listen to that. Robert, when did you tell your teammates and what was their reaction? Uh, I told my teammates on Saturday night uh, in Adelaide and uh, I was simply overwhelmed. Um, I, I cannot speak highly enough about this group of men standing behind me. Um, it is a brotherhood. It is, they are, they are there unconditionally 100% of the time for you and, and I, would, I would do anything for these guys. Absolutely, there is. I've got no doubt in my mind that, you know, if any year this is this is the year that we can do something special, and and uh, Sunday's game was was just proof of that. You know, down by 11 with or uh, going into the fourth, six minutes, uh, a minute to go, down by six, and we and we and we win in overtime. I mean, the strength and character of this group is is just unshakable, and. Uh, and that made it even harder. But um, but again, I, I didn't want to. I wanted to go to my terms. I didn't want to play um, for the wrong reasons. Um, it wouldn't be fair to my teammates. It wouldn't be fair to the club, and not fair to myself. So it was a big call, but I had to make it, and I'm and I'm I'm glad I did. Evo, uh, Brad's own admission: his body wasn't doing what his mind was telling it to do. Had, had you noticed that at all? Um. I think that just the way he plays the game, you know, he, he he's had hip operations, he's had knees, wrists, fingers, you, you name, he's had it, and uh, I think that yeah, you, know, you can see over time that, that there, there was some frustration uh, starting to occur. There's no question about that. But uh, you know, did I expect it to happen uh, this weekend? No. Yeah, mate, did you try and talk him out? Of it? Absolutely not. No, I think uh, elite athletes say no. They know when it's time, and it's it's not my place to tell him what he should and shouldn't be doing. Uh, it's my place to support him and uh, help him go through a process. Uh, there's absolutely no no way that I would uh, talk anybody out of anything at all. It's, he's made the decision, and 100% uh, support him. You say you weren't expecting it. How big a shock was it actually when it, when it happened? Well, when you coach somebody from 16 years of age, and you've been involved for 12, 13 years, and uh, you know, we, we've done so much together, uh, the highs of lows of life. Uh, you know, I've been there with him the whole time. So, uh, you know, it was, I was devastated. I think everybody in the whole team was devastated from uh, the players through to, through to management. And, uh, but the thing is, it, it's, it's our place is to support a champion like Brad Robbins. Bevo, I'm not sure how it all works, but with Brad not on the payroll now, does that give you a bit more latitude with Michael Dunnigan? Uh, no. No, it doesn't, because uh, Michael's come in as a replacement uh, on the injury waiver for Matt Knight. So, uh, unfortunately, the rules uh, don't allow us to, to do that. How do you replace him then? You can't. I mean, the thing is, no, nobody can replace uh, a Matty Knight, a Sean Reddy, a Brad Robbins. You just can't do that. 
uh, he, he's very unique and uh, you know, I'll be meeting with my coaching staff and management this afternoon. So this has happened very, very quickly. Uh, so it's a matter of us regrouping. Uh, I'll meet with, uh, with the leadership group as well. well we'll discuss where we go from here. Uh, but right now our, our, our biggest thing is to, to make sure that you know, Robert goes out in the right way and uh, we'll meet with him to discuss uh, you know, his retirement. He is the heart and soul of this club, and uh, you know, everybody looks at uh, at stats for you know, how many points they score, how many rebounds, and you know, media always comes out. You know, I read it all the time. The best player was such and such a player because they scored the most points. It's not. You know, he's he's the glue player. Uh, he's the one that does the dirty work. And I think every successful team needs players like uh, Brad Robbins. Okay, what were the emotions pre-game Sunday? Um, Uh, it was very emotional. Uh, look, I I did my best to to stay composed, to stay calm. At the end of the day, we had a game to play, and uh, we owed those guys. Um, post game was the hardest, um, especially after such an emotional win. I mean, you play, you live to play games like that, and. Uh, yeah, and and to go out on such a game was I would never, I, you know, what a what a I couldn't have thought of a better ending. Um, but post game was 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 more uh, where the emotions were at. You feel they sort of lifted for you in that game? Oh, absolutely. Um, Greg Hire, you know, in particular, you could see it in his eye, and he'd come up in that fourth quarter and just say, "We're going to get this one for you. We're going to, you know, we're going to do this." Um, you know, he makes a big three. Kev Lish does his thing, decides he wants to turn up in the fourth and takes over the game, and uh, and then and, and then just puts a dagger in him. So yeah, I, I've got no doubt that they did. But but you know they didn't just do it for me. This is this is this club. This is this team. We've we've spoke about this um, many a time about about the type of club we want to be, and and that was just evident of of, of putting uh, words into actions. What's life after basketball? Yeah, it's. Um, it's exciting. It's scary. Um, I, you know, I was talking to friends. It's like a big safety net's been taken away from you. But, but as I said, I, I'll still be involved in the club, and and that will will get cleared uh, cleared up, ho hopefully quite soon. Um, so short term, I'd love to still be involved in the club, and I will. Um, and, and long term, you know, who knows? What's the little fella safe you told him? Or told him? <clears throat> yeah, I told him. He. Uh, I sat him down and I said, OK, Chaz, this, this is what's happening. Uh, you know, Daddy's decided that he's not going to play basketball anymore. He goes, oh, OK. Can I still go watch Damo? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, you can still watch Damo. <laughs> what about Daddy? He goes, yeah, yeah, I can still watch Damo. Can we shoot outside? I said, yeah. And he goes, OK. Can we go watch Power Rangers now? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It's, uh, that put everything into perspective, you know. It was only until I had a chat with him that I knew everything was going to be OK because he just took all the emotion out of it. He took, he made it real, you know. I'm a dad and I'm on a, I'm on a, I've got a new path for me and he, he made that clear for me and he, and he always does. Was that part of it too, your body being in good nick so you can sort of knock around with the sun? That sort of thing? Oh, absolutely. That's, that, that definitely comes into it. I mean, it's... Um, you know, being an athlete, you, you, you wake up, you eat, you train, you train half the day, you come home, you eat, you sleep, you wake up again, you know, and, and, and all that stuff. You know, you know, mentally it's very exhausting. Um, and, you know, it's, it's my ninth year this year and, and, and given, you know, the stress my body's been under, it's also mentally challenging. And, uh, and that was definitely something that I thought, yeah, I want to I be around um, mentally and physically for my son, for my family and, and for the new, you know, my new direction in life.